Hello and welcome to the Game Line, Wales Online's daily rugby debate show. I'm Ben James. We're joined by a very special guest today, Simon Thomas, and we've got WRU chairman Gareth Davis. How are you doing, Gareth? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, this well, is taking me down memory lane. I'll I'm, you I'm know. sure it is. Well, I was looking at through my record books, and of course, it's Wales France next week. And the first Wales France game I saw in person was 1982, and you okay. were the captain. That's right, 82. Oh, yeah. you were captain. You were fly half, definitely. I was captain 82. Were, yeah. were you captain yeah, 82? Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. And Wales won. I think Harold Davis lots of points in the in the bag, so that was a nice memory. But I was going to bring it right up today. And uh, your trip to Ireland, it was an interesting one. It, you actually had two trips to Ireland this week. Well, yeah, tri- trip, <laughs> the obvious one uh, was to uh, uh, to attend the match, obviously, and the sort of things surrounding the match. And uh, quite a interesting journey back. We, we were quite lucky, actually, in the sense that we were we took off on time on the, on, yeah. on the Sunday. And um, 25 minute flight to Cardiff, which is great, with the, with the following wind. And... Uh, as we were coming down, thought, I looked at my watch, 25 past 12, this is great, I'll be home now, <laughs> watch, the, watch the French game. And uh, anyway, as we, we, I, I don't know, it's difficult to, to assess, we're probably 50, 100 feet from the tarmac, you know, mm. suddenly, poof, we aborted the uh, landing and uh, we took off the clouds again and <laughs> circled for half an hour <laughs> and we were told, um, you're going to Manchester, guys. So, um, <laughs> so I got home at 9 o'clock, I think, on... Um, on Sunday. So you've shared the pain of the Wales fans. Yeah, okay. very, very much so, yeah. <laughs> and you're back, you're back, back for, for a Lions meeting. Yeah, we had a Lions meeting yesterday, so uh, it, was a, should have stayed. it was a seven o'clock flight um, from Cardiff, a very smooth one, and then uh, a seven o'clock flight back last night, so all, all good. I'm okay. speaking to fans in the pub, we've had lots of questions since we were yeah. coming on. I, I, we thought we'd just basically ask you first of all, really, so outline exactly what the role of the WRU chairman is. Right. I'm not asking you to justify your job or anything. What is it, how much involvement, and you've had so many different roles in, in sport yeah. and in other areas. I, I suppose really it's, 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 you know, it, it's the role that any chairman is, is, is accountable for. It's a sort of, uh, you know, to, sort of, to try and ensure um, the effectiveness of the board in terms of um, agreeing and delivering a strategy, mm. and, and in doing that, of course, you sort of, uh, you know, it's a case of just to make sure that the business is well run, but not to run the business. Yeah. So we do that, and in terms of trying to uh, ensure the effectiveness of of of, of, the, of the of the board, I say, in terms of following the strategies by holding holding the chief exec primarily, yes. and and he. Uh, as it currently is with, with Martin, he threw his exec team in terms of their different sort of uh, areas of the operation. So it's it's, it's holding them to account. We agree we agree a strategy be, be between the between the board and the exec, and uh, they've got to deliver. One of the big decisions the exec, the board, yourself have had to make over the last couple of years is how do you follow Warren Gatland, which is you know a tough job to do. Wayne Pivak's the man you appointed. You're into his first Six Nations now. You've had a couple of games. How do you feel he's doing? Are, are there any particular targets the union has set, Wayne, over this season, over the coming years? The, the first thing I'd like to say on that is in terms of following on from what I just said in terms of how we, we, we operate is is the very fact that, you know, led by Martin, to be fair, we, we identified three years ago mm. that what Warren's going to be finishing in 2019. And I think we anticipated that you know, it, this could be a bun fight for the next coach. Because, <laughs> you know, there are cycles now, and they, they generally, they follow the Rugby World Cup. So we started, the first trip we went on was uh, t- the tour to New Zealand in 2016, where we interviewed, and I'm not gonna name individuals, but we saw about five people on that trip. We then interviewed four or five people back in the UK uh, du- during 16, 17, and, and we came up with a short list of three. So, you know, Obviously, the proof of the pudding would be in the eating in terms of how how, how sort of Wayne gets on. Obviously, and he's, he's more than aware of that. But um, I think so. Th- that sort of suggests that we probably got it right in terms of the process. Mm. So we weren't forced down any alley. Uh, in terms of, it's only one coach that's available. We had, you know, in the end, we 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 had three three people we we we, we considered obviously seriously, seriously right to the end. No, not at all. <laughs> no, um, no, that's going to be unfair yeah. on the individuals. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, uh, so, so, so I think that that reflects that that, that part of it was 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 um, was well done. I think. So, in terms of you know, I don't think there are there, there aren't any strict KPIs in terms of games won. You know, Wayne wants to win every game, yes. and that's what that's where he that's where he starts from, and we support him in that. Mm. Um, but obviously, we we are realistic as well that you're not going to win every game. And I think even looking at this year, uh, this this calendar year, we play I think every one of the top ten yeah, countries in the world. That's right. Uh, apart from Australia, I think. Yes. Um, so you know, it's, it's 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 going to be a good test for him, and that's why. And to be fair, the I think the people of Wales have been very supportive to date. 
Um, and, and whilst we realise that if, if things do go off rails, then it's a, it's a tough environment as well. But uh, I'd like to think that you know, people who will, will, will support the team, support Wayne, obviously as the new coach, and obviously interestingly as well, in the efforts he's made to, to um, select his backroom team. Mm. You know, I think we've been criticised over the years, and a lot of it rightly so in terms of perhaps have we paid enough attention to developing coaches. But no, it's looking quite healthy. We've got Jonathan Humphreys, Stephen Jones in there, Byron Hayward. You know, people like Dwayne Peel, sort of, uh, you know, sort of doing his stuff in uh, uh, in in Ulster. So there are Jonathan Thomas across the water yeah. as well. So there there are a number of uh, you know good, uh, successful Welsh Welsh Dianne coaches. Dian as well. Dian, yeah, yeah, and, you know, yeah. His future holds. Yeah. So so I think you know, but but I think in terms of Wayne's team, we're looking at it in that respect. You know, it's it's it's, it's full of. Of Welsh people who are sort of learning their trade, and it's probably yeah. ideal to be learning it, uh, you know, and, and under under Wayne having been at the sharp end of uh, as well of regional rugby, and Jonathan obviously at international rugby in Scotland. One more for, for me before we get on to the Regis um, listeners' um, questions. Something that's been quite topical this last week has been the whole pay banding issue, which we've talked about at various times. And as we understand it, um, two or three of your players, I think Justin Tipperick, Corey Hill, and Ross Moriarty, you know, top Wales players. Are, lodged appeals over, over the banding. How do you feel that system is sort of bedding in? And is the appeals something you kind of expected? Is it is it working, the pay banding system? First of all, obviously, I'm not going to go into any individual no, uh, no, no. Uh, arrangements or agreements. But but I think you know, we've always had a, the, the problem since since 1995 and the, the onset of professionalism. You know, battling very often against each other. Mm. You know, the, the clubs as it was the, as it was then, the regions now, and all we're doing by battling for Joe Bloggs is is upping the ante yeah, all the time. And, and the agents love that, of course. That's, <laughs> that's the, you know that's, that's that's what they do for a living. Um, so it it suits them to that you're reporting stuff about the speculation of players. It helps the players at the end of the day. Yeah, it does. But but it, a lot a lot of this has been done you know, in, in order to try and it's it's a, t- it's a tough gig isn't it to try and sort of ensure uh, you know, the sus- sustainability of the four regions and team wheels the, the other five entities as we call them five pro entities uh, and also to to try and keep a lid on on player wages you know, mm. you know say, I'm sure a lot of players don't like to hear that but <laughs> but that's the reality otherwise you know you, we could come across some financial crisis where there aren't enough uh, the same number of teams or we can't afford to keep players in wales now yeah, you know, the last couple of years we've managed to retain most players, yeah. and I, I look. I'm, I'm realistic enough as well to realise we we won't retain all. You know, the odd player will drift off, and and, and good luck to him. You know, so uh, that, that, that's that's fine to, in that respect. But on the in the understanding that we, but it's not. You know, it's not a. You know, the, one one old boss used to tell me we talk about the grass is greener the other side. Yeah, but it's a lot harder to cut as well. <laughs> and, and and I think you've seen you've seen that in you've certainly seen it in France. Yes. You know, I don't think hardly any of our players have, have seen out the contracts no. because you know they are treated like lumps of meat if you like, as opposed to being looked after. Um, so so there's, there are strengths in staying in Wales. There are financial pressures on occasions where people will will, will disappear. The, the banding is there to try and create a level playing field, a sustainable business. Um, and your, your comment about the the appeals, you know, I, I, I read stuff online saying, oh, there's appeals after appeals. But that's fair, isn't it? Yeah. If we, we talk about, you know, criminal course, uh, uh, <laughs> cases or whatever, there are appeals. So yeah. there, are, there are appeals against judgments that people don't like. And I think... That reflects a fair system. Um, now, you mentioned Martin Phillips. Yeah. Obviously, you work with close to the chief executive. We know Martin's going. I think, Ben, we've got some questions. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a lot about of Martin. questions, understandably. So, um, what, we'll, pe- people applying for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got, got a few CVs here. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so, uh, we'll jump to the first one. This is from uh, Elwyn. Uh, what's the timetable to announce the replacement for the CEO? Um, we started the process. Uh, we, we sort of set up as a, a succession group with, within the Russia Union. So I'm sort of heading that. Um, uh, Aileen Richards, or uh, ind- independent non-exec, mm-hmm. is, is assisting assisting me with that. We've we've we we waited for a couple of weeks to be honest after Martin's decision became public, just to just to let let the dust settle and uh, ex- you know perhaps expecting a few phone calls here and there, expressions of interest, which which we did, which we've had. We had a couple of people uh, expressing their interest. We've also had expressions of interest from uh, recruitment companies, headhunters, as they affectionately called. Um, so what, what we did, we, we met in Dublin last Saturday morning and we agreed that we'd go out to um, uh, to Headhunters. So we, we're, we're, we're at that stage of the moment where we've 
gone to half of, uh, five, I think, five uh, companies to say, well, let us know your view on certain things that, uh, that, that uh, would be relevant. And we'll wait for them to come back, hopefully, by uh, the end of next week. Uh, we'll then appoint a firm, uh, one of the companies, and they will get on and do the search in conjunction with us. So it's difficult to put a specific timeline on it, but that's the sort of thread so far. So if we can uh, get a sort of remit agreed by the end of this month, um, then it's you know it, it it'll it'll take a good a good month. I thought it takes to the end of March. Um, we'll we'll interview. Uh, we'll use um, my thought at the moment is to have one of the. Uh, regional representatives are sitting on PRB mm -hmm. uh, to sit on the final panel together with one of our um, club representatives. So we've got a community game representative on the table and a professional game representative on the table, ind our independent and myself. So I think that's the that's the process without being tied to any sort of time limit. Martin sort of, you know, sort of, uh, Martin's term was sort of six months notice, which runs out in July. Martin's been very flexible to be fair and sort of a uh, if you get somebody before that, then perhaps he's, he'll stand down. Or if, if it overruns, and if, mm -hmm. if you want for some uh, stability, then he's welcome to stay. You know, he's, he's more than happy to stay as well. So he's been, you know, more than more than fair and reasonable in all this. That kind of answers the question from Phil here about the search process. One other question, Robin Williams here. What are the priorities for the next year? Which I guess means, what are you looking for, really? Yeah. Look, I, I think Martin has done an amazing job um, uh, in terms of you know changing the, the culture and the way in, in the way we, in which we operate. I think, um, you know, as, as most corporates, we, we have uh, our values publicised everywhere. And we've, and I know Martin in particular, is, is, is a real, is really firm on values. And I think mm -hmm. we've illustrated that over the last couple of years. I won't go into the cases where, you know, we have shown integrity in terms of managing certain things, which perhaps certain people didn't agree with. It, was, it could have been some quick financial wins here and there, but it just went against the grain. I think I think he and I are very similar in, in terms of, uh, sharing value. So I think that's important in moving on, I think, in terms of uh, the person uh, we're looking for. I think we're, we, you know, the obvious things like they're going to have to have um, you know, some commercial experience because mm. that's the world in which we currently live in. You know, you're now looking at boards that, external boards that we sit on, uh, which are totally different to the ones the boards of five years ago, mm. you know, the, the arrival of private equity and f more fi finances in the game. So the new person will have to be, you know, you'll have to be somebody, he or she, will have to be somebody with a you know, pretty good sort of emotional intelligence, I think, to be able to, you know, to carry through from, you know, some, some highfalutin boards in, in Paris or London through to, you know, the, the WI you've seen, our board, through to community clubs, the professional games. So somebody who can sort of be comfortable in all those different environments. So that, that's important in terms of uh, uh, EQ, if you like. Um, one, one thing Martin has been particularly good at in, in, in terms of developing and leading the team, it's, uh, it's, it's not a case of do as I say. It's, mm. uh, so I think I, 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 I've sat down with each of the executive uh, over the last seven days on, on a one-to-one -one basis just to find out, you know, where are you guys now? Where do you think the business is? How do we move forward? What do you think? What do you think Martin has brought? What do you think perhaps we, how do we move it uh, forward again? So so that's been quite interesting as well. And I think, you know, universally there, people of uh, our colleagues in the exec and at the WIU appreciate the work and the, the sort of uh, the mentoring he's done, if you like, in terms mm. of people's own development. So that's, that's been a strength. So I think somebody somebody would have those skills as well in terms of uh, uh, the, the coaching, the mentoring. Um, doing things like this, I think um, yeah. somebody that's yeah, sort of comfortable, with, that. comfortable with the media. Not everybody is. So fancy a switchy job. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Too long and tough for me. So somebody, you know, somebody so that's comfortable with the media. Somebody is politically, and mm -hmm. I, I say politically in all areas. Obviously, we we, we, we want to work uh, closely with government, uh, with a small P as well, I suppose, in terms of dealing with all the various stakeholders that mm. we deal with. And it, it's, you know, it, it is a cliche, isn't it? You can't, people, you can't please all the people all the time. It's certainly true uh, in, in Welsh rugby, you know, and because, you know, everybody does have pockets of self-interest. You can't get away from that. You know, the community clubs, are, 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 they, they want, you know, they want success at their level, sustainability, the pro game, same thing, but it, with different magnitude. Mm. Um so it's a, it's you know it's a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a tough gig you know so it's a lot of people think oh, I'd love to do that job, but if you start looking at all the issues that arise you know, but it's 
likewise, it's, it, it, I'm sure it's a great job to, to do as well, being, being chief executive. You want, you want to show the people coming quickly? Will I, will, I wouldn't have thought so, no, no. But, um, but again, you know, I think once you start itemising what we want, so it's, it's, it's the commercial, it down, yeah, it? It, it does narrow it yeah. down to, to a more realistic level. You mentioned the club game there, always an important key thing for yourselves. And we've had quite a few questions about the Welsh Premiership. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A league that's had a lot of changes over the year. Just what's the kind of the Welsh Rugby Union's view on the role of that league at the moment, in particular in terms of player development? Because obviously you've seen the A team, regional A teams coming in. Is it going to stay as it is for a while? Because there's been a lot of chopping and changing, isn't there? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd like to think so. I think I think I think when I, when I started in the sort of the, my first couple of years, they, there was a, there was a feeling, not just just at the WIU level, but within the clubs that. What is our purpose really? You know, are we there to? And I think there wasn't. There was a thought while you're there you now to to produce players ultimately for Wales. Um, others, I think, just saw it as a we play in this as it was then sixteen club competition, and we want to be top because mm. we want to win the league, which is which is what sports all about, which is great. Um, and and there was confusion, I think, in in many ways as well. And perhaps people weren't were, were spending money in the wrong areas. Yeah. And I and and it's it's once you start taking money away from people, it's you know it's a it's a huge you see, issue. You see that the English we championship the, now. Yeah, exactly. And look, the only thing we did, and I'm not knocking England on this, but you know we we had probably the best part of two years of consultation. There wasn't much consultation uh, in England, but the well, no, but <laughs> so so I think we did it through consultation where we sat down yeah for a couple of, for must have been a couple of years, yeah. led by. Um, uh, Geraint John was heavily involved, yes. um, and the, the clubs themselves were involved. There's representation from uh, a number of the clubs, and the thing is, you so you sit down and you're on a project like that, and you sort of you identify what what you want to get out of it. So what we, what we wanted to get out of it, and what everybody else wanted to get out of it, was clarity of purpose. What mm. what are we there for? Um, and that was established early on, and I think it was a case of we want to be the best club team in Wales. So if it's Ponapreeth, or if it's Cardiff, or mm. Bedworth, or whatever, we want to be the best club team in Wales. And and that was I, that was that universal agreement. The problem is, you know, once you start putting all these things in, what, the result at the end of it comes out was we, we're, not going to, we're not going to continue to spend two million quid, uh, as it was, just the best part of. Uh, for what? Something we're not quite clear of. No. Um, and so whilst, whilst we still appreciate, you know, that, I think pro- I, I probably made a, made a bit of a silly comment a couple of years ago where, you know, I said there's, you know, the, the Premiership doesn't produce any players. Well, well it, it, it's too it, sweeping, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah exa- exactly. So it does, but it's in some ways it, it's it's there. I think as a as the term would be a breeding ground, if you like, because a lot of guys will start off playing, especially when they're younger. I think. What has happened over the last couple of years, you know, the 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 the, the, the Premiership clubs are now and, and do have relationships with the regions, mm. and, and and players, do, especially the younger guys, they do come back. They just had an injury, or perhaps they, you know, they're slightly out of favour for a while mm. or whatever. They do slip back and, and play in that. So so it's not a case of saying nobody from the region the pro games play. Yes, they do play, and they and, and I think players count it as a very important place to, to be mm. when they perhaps are not, are not playing at that sort of regional level. So I think it, it, it does have a role, but primarily I think, you know, what, what I'd like to see is uh, we're the best team in Wales, guys. At, at, at best club team in Wales, you know. So so that was the that was the that was the sort of outcome that was that was uh, uh, that was agreed upon. But obviously there are fallouts financially along the way which then muddies the water somewhat. There's lots of different questions. I mean one is just kind of a topic following on from this in terms of purpose. Wales sevens. Been a lot of talk about Will Sims. Yeah. The results have been patchy, in fairness. Um, I don't know exactly how much the union spends. You, you probably have a better idea than me. But is that a team that you have a long term commitment to? Is it is it reaping the rewards that you want from it? Yeah. Again, it, it's it's subject to Mark one, the question. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, it's subject to to ongoing discussions, ongoing review. It, you know, we are a tier one nation, and this is a world event. Mm. Are we part of that? So you, you feel on the one hand. We should continue that. We back to your producing players. We have produced players. So you get your Sam Crosses, your yeah. James Davis, uh, Luke Morgan, yeah. um, Owen Lane. Well, Catherine recently. came through that route. To produce, came through it. Lloyd Smith. Williams. Yeah. So yeah, you could you could, you could you could go back. So there's a value of that. But again, I, is that his primary purpose? I'm not sure. Mm. The the only thing is with cost. Yes, there's a cost element. But let's say we are part of a tier one sort of setup. So. There's a feeling we should be involved. There's also, of course, the sponsorship that comes from our partners as well, who say so Jersey sponsors, etc., who who get that exposure. So some of the cost is obviously balanced out by some of the mm. some of the sort of uh, sponsorship monies we receive as well. So it's 
But uh, so at the moment, it, yeah, look, I, nobody more disappointed than I when I you know, turn up Saturday morning or something to to watch uh, you know, to watch some action from around the world and we're getting beaten. You know? Yeah. Um, but you know, sort of, uh, it's it, it is difficult as well in terms of. And I, I, I don't. I'm not, not pointing the finger at the regions here because they're under pressure this time of year in particular, feeding the under twenties, feeding the senior senior team, obviously. Um, and then you have your nowadays. You're probably twenty percent of your squad is injured, mm. so the, the availability of players for the Sens team isn't probably as we would wish. You know, as the the coaches would would put would certainly t- tick some names like we mentioned earlier on. But, but because of injuries, the, the regions can't release them. No. So, so it, it is a difficult one. Um, one final one on that subject before Ben gives you some more of the readers' questions. It, it's kind of a similar thing. Wales A. Now that's a team that actually was brought back in in theory, I think 2016, 2017 period, with Wales tw- under 20s no longer being the capture side. But for various reasons, Wales A since then and hasn't played. What's the situation with that? Can you explain why there haven't been any fixtures, and and is that something that can change? Can can we realistically see that coming onto the calendar? It's, it's probably linked to my previous answer in terms of availability of players. There's also the issue of availability of teams, because we've we've tried quite hard actually to set up matches with Ireland A and with England A, mm. and uh, it, it it just seemed to be impossible. I think with yeah. the with the crowded calendar. Uh, we could do it at other times in the year, I suppose. Yes. But then you think, well, you know, the guys are, are you know, they, they, they're playing for their regions, they're playing for Wales, they're summer tours. Yes. So it's, it's a tough one to fit in. So in theory, I think, and, and all countries are supportive of, of, of that sort of system or the notion. But, you know, unless you could get something off the ground like a, like a, a, a National A Team League or something, but where do you play it? Yeah, I mean, could you play the likes of Georgia and this kind of country? Is always availability of the opposition again the issue? Well, all the guys are playing in France. Yeah, uh, or generally are. So it's it's it's, it's almost like the, the tier two autumn international has kind of become a Wales A fixture, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. when you look at the players who play in that, the issue is it's like look, a lot of the issues we had in Dublin yesterday talking of Lions and fitting in with PRL in particular you know yeah. so we just need 60 weeks in the year really and uh, yeah, we solve it yeah <laughs> anyone from the readers uh, okay. yeah there's a few more from the regions um, obviously talking a lot there about player development but we got a question here about coaching development uh, Mark asked does there need to be a director of elite coaching or something similar to the FAW setup um, obviously we mentioned a few Welsh coaches like Dwayne Peel and Jonathan Thomas but uh, Mark doesn't seem to think that we're producing as many elite coaches for the regions um, we, well we've got we've got a, a, a high performance coach coaching manager anyway in Dan Clements he's been in post probably the last 12 months 18 months maybe so he's been working through with with, with certain coaches there I think he's working currently with people like Justin, Justin Tipper James Hook for example who are sort of looking for life after playing um, Chris Chris Horseman has come through uh, the system as well so we are producing them you know I, I think I said I mentioned earlier I, I think we, we as a union you know we, we have ignored it really over the Last twenty years, to to, mm. to a large extent, your priority has been on on players. But I think now that, that you know there is a there's an acceptance and a realization of that. So we brought that's why we brought in Dan to try and lead on that processes in place. But you know the thing is with you know developing elite coaches, that's not something you, you can't just turn the tap exactly. on. So that's gonna you know that's gonna be after my time actually. So uh, <laughs> probably won't be accountable for that then. Mm. But uh, um, so so hopefully that the work that's going on there that will start. See, seeing the delivery of uh, of top class coaches. Run rather straight to the point from Jimmy JB here. Will the CVC cash be given to the regions? If not, why not? Now this is obviously <laughs> a reference to the Pro 14 doing a, a deal with CVC. We heard to take but twenty seven percent of them. Quite a lot of millions of pounds potentially come in the union's way. Yeah. Is it all going to go to the regions? Well, I don't know. It'll, 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 it'll come in. It'll come into us, of course. And the, and the regions obviously will have a, a, a chunk of that. Uh, there's also cause the, I was quoted a couple of months ago when I said uh, that all the CVC money won't go to the regions. Well, the, there are other deals. There are the. Yeah, I know it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought it up. The, uh, there, there are po- there are possible other CVC deals or private equity deals on the table as well. So. The, the, where that puts us, I think, it puts us in a, in a you know, great of a pot of money. Yes. Uh, you know, there's a danger, of course. All you're doing is mortgaging the future because you're giving a share of, of future revenues. Yeah. So, um, so we have to be careful, I think, mm. as to how we manage that. Because what we're not going to do is throw the money out the window first day. Because right. I think I know what will happen to it. Will it get spent? Well, you've been in the business as long as I have. 
<laughs> so so no, it's, it's an opportunity I think in terms of you know it's it's a it's a great opportunity uh, you know, to, to 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 welcome some extra revenue coming in yeah. extra funds coming in which I think we need we need to be smart and back to the role of the CEO um, you know I think it's a great opportunity to have money but we have to be smart as to how we use it to best effect. Yes, you know, obviously the the, the, the regional stuff is important, there, but there'll be other projects as, as well that hopefully will generate monies that will go to the community yeah. game, will go to the professional game. So it's not just a case of using the money to spend it on players. I think it's got to come in to sort of, uh, uh, if you like, un underpin the, the game in Wales, not mm. not not just a a, se a section. It no, the, some of the obviously some of the Pro 14 money if that does come in. You can see the the regions have a strong claim to to, yes. to a large part of it, yeah. So, but I think we're going to be more than reasonable in that uh, in that respect. I guess an, an obvious follow-on question from that, in terms of CVC coming in, is that people are, the assumption being made: CVC are coming in, they're coming to the Premiership, they're coming into the Pro 14. Is the logical move to end up with the British and Irish League? So, are they, are the WRU actually actively pressing for that? What's your what's your views on the potential of a British and Irish League? Well, you know, this would be on. It certainly started with the Anglo Welsh back in '98, didn't it? And it's, it's 20 years, you know, which, which you could say lost time, maybe. But um, there's, there's no formal discussions as such. I, th I think there's what the, the thought is. Well, hang on. Private equity is bought into uh, the English league. It's yeah. buying into another league. Is that something down the track? And and I, I, and I don't think anybody's rushing into that. I think CVC at the moment have their hands full, I'd have thought, with the English Premiership. They're trying mm. to sort of move things on in that respect. If the deal is done with Pro 14, I think it's a, so it's a case of, sort of things to bed down and, you know, who knows in the future, really. Any more? There? Um, a few yet? people asking, when will there be an announcement on a new kit supplier? Oh. Soon. 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 When, <laughs> when are you up to it? When is the current deal going up to, just for clarification on that? End of this year. Oh, sorry, no, to the, to the autumn tests, actually. So tests. the first time you'll see the new kit will be 2021 no, Six no, Nations? Uh, no, it's 20. That's the autumn internationals yeah, yeah, of this year? Yeah. Oh, right. I'm almost certain. Right, we can, we'll I mean, double check. Yeah, yeah, we will yeah, double yeah. check. But I mean, anyway, you're in the process. Yeah. Where, where are we on that? A few names have been mentioned. Yeah, look, it's just commercially <laughs> sensitive at the moment. I'm not, I'm not going to go down there. Fair enough. Okay, then, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll uh, probably finish then um, uh, talking about the 60 cap rule. Um, how do the union feel that it's working, and are we are we likely to see any changes? I think it's working uh, in the sense that you know very few players have left. Number the pleasing thing for me in recent times, I suppose, is the number of guys coming back. If yeah. you like, and some of the and we've got we've got this. You know, it is it is worrying on the one hand seeing all the uh, young the, the young guys going off, and but you know if they're following careers, they're following education. You mm. can't blame them for that. You know, good on. Your Hartbury's and Clifton's and Millfields of this world for, for doing that, which is important again from from the development of, of, of the rounded individual. I think it's, you know, it's on the one hand it's good, but we then have to make it attractive, I think, uh, and alluring for them to come back. Um, and if if having a rule like that means you have these, some of these young talented guys at the moment think, well, if I want to play for Wales, um, I'm gonna have to go back. Well, if you look at the case of Ross Moriarty, he's the classic example at the moment. He's out of contract. He's you know 40 odd caps short of the 60. Now, without the rule, there might be a good chance that he would go to England because, yeah. there, you know, there's yeah. potentially offers there. So I guess you, you would see that as an example and other players as an example of it is achieving its goal. Yeah, look, I think, I think it has. I think, you know, so there's an ongoing review of it. Mm. I think the, the coaches, the players and, and our, our you know, colleagues of mine uh, on the exec are sort of continually looking at it. And, you know, nothing is necessarily forever, no. but I think, and, I'm not, and I don't say that in the view that something's going to change shortly, <laughs> but, you know, the, these things... Are constantly under review, and uh, I think that's the way, best way to run any part of the business. Is you know, it's not to have finite points when we're going to make decisions, but let, let's see how things go. Because especially in our business at the moment, your business of rugby is, you know, it's pretty pretty dynamic really in terms of the changes that are going on, uh, both internally and externally. So uh, everything is under review. Two questions to finish up then for me. Can I, if you were to sum up how the state of Welsh rugby at the moment, just a kind of general reflection on that. And are you still enjoying being part of it? <laughs> the, fir the first one, it's an interesting one, right? Welsh rugby is, 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 is in dire mood, if you read social media. <laughs> and, and, and you've talked to a lot of people around the country. Outside, it's quite interesting. Right? And, and one thing I think we've managed to do in terms of, uh, I think, gain and solidify our respect in the world game. Mm. Um, Guys outside Wales think we think we're flying, right? Now they don't understand you know, the, the 
the issues the community game have, the issues a professional game has. You know, so I'm not saying uh, by any means the things are it's utopia. And we've, we, but but it's quite interesting that when when you go to these external meetings, you know, sort of they really think that we that you know. Plus, we've seen in good light, which is a positive, I think. Mm. Um, a nice the second part of your question. Are you uh, enjoying it? Yeah, it's it's one of those. It's, it's, look, it's one of those <laughs> gr- today. great great things to, to have done, you know, to yeah. and uh, um, you know, been brought back into the game at a very privileged level. Um, yes, every every day you go to work, you think well, what's going to crop up today, um, and you've been very gentle with me as well. Thank well, you. Don't say that. We have more now. I think there's something nasty to ask about anything else. I think we've uh, I think we worked through. Uh, all the questions so I think that's it for today um, hopefully we haven't dampened your enjoyment too much Gareth <laughs> no, no, it's been good uh, it's been a pleasure having you on and uh, we'll be back again same time same place tomorrow